Welcome back to the AL.com Film Room. I'm John Parker Wilson. This week with Cole Kublik, we're doing an Iron Bowl special uh, with a big game this week. Cole, let's go back to when you're playing and, and what's going on with campus and the locker room, going to class. What are some memories uh, that you have from down on the plains? Well, it was always a little bit different because campus is more crowded, more people coming in, and obviously ticket requests, friends are going to be there, people want to know about the game, what you're going to run. But when it fell on this particular week, students are gone because it's Thanksgiving. So uh, classes aren't as, aren't as jam-packed. You don't have to worry about that. Your schedule actually lightens up a little bit. But uh, for me, I just remember how much extra attention was there. People who wanted to know what was going to happen with the game, what does the game plan look like. If we were traveling, we probably stayed in Birmingham. So, of course, being from Homewood, I knew a lot of people here. And, hey, I'm going to come by the hotel. I'm going to come hang out, give me some tickets. And it, there comes a time in the week, and it's usually pretty early. You have to shut that down. I don't know how it was for you, but you just have to say, you know what, no more phone calls, no more emails. Uh, I, I'm, I have to be done with this, and I need to get dialed in on Alabama. Yeah, I totally agree. It's, it's so much going on because it's a culmination of the whole year of the whole fans, whether it's your family, your friends, or just people from around the state. They're interested in this game, and now it's magnified this week. So you really do have to isolate yourself. And as a player, it's tough to juggle everything. And, and it being even better, though, without class this week, that takes a lot off your plate. So you can, you can really focus on football. Were you, did, were you prepared going to Alabama based on the Hoover-Vestavia rivalry that you guys went through? I know I had to pre pretty nutty every year. Big, big rivalry, but, you know, it's not as big as Hoover Spain Park right now. <laughs> so we've we got to get down to that. One thing Auburn's going to have to do this week is pressure the quarterback. Cole, let's take a look at a couple plays right here where they're doing just that. Well, John Parker, first thing Auburn, Will Muschamp, and this defense going to have to do is get into situations like this. Third and nine, of course. Put Idaho in a bad predicament last week. They're going to go empty set, so no backs, five wide receivers. And you'll see pressure come from Dontavius Russell, and he'll split the guard and tackle. It's a stunt as Casanova McKenzie will come back inside. Carl Lawson does a nice job out here on the edge. He'll run through tight end and tackle. But the pressure and the penetration from Russell is what kind of forces the rollout, and that's going to allow Jonathan Ford on the back end to come up with an interception. But you'll see the little stunt right here inside that actually could end up working, but 95 gets that initial push, forces the quarterback outside of the pocket, actually makes a nice move there, and Jonathan Ford steps in to make the interception. Now I want to run back just a little bit and show you how once you make an interception, sticking with a play can potentially turn into something nice. This is 19, Nick Ruffin, right as the ball is intercepted. We'll come back to that momentarily. Jonathan Ford, running back in high school. You know he's going to be elusive with the football in his hand and finds a way to get all the way back to the end zone. Sometimes you don't even have to really make a block. Back again, 19, Nick Ruffin. He's going to get just a little bit on this offensive lineman, but watch how he also walls off the quarterback, or excuse me, tight end, from coming in and making this play almost by default, which keeps Jonathan Ford from going out of bounds and allows for the score. We'll take another look here from the back end. You see the pressure come right up the gut, like we talked about. And we showed you the penetration was gonna come from 95 initially. There's 95, that's where the push come. Quarterback's gonna roll out. McKenzie was coming back underneath. Lawson has a little bit from the outside, but that's not really gonna matter. And Jonathan Ford just on the back end. Because of that pressure, great coverage the entire time, steps in front, and of course turns that into a big play for Auburn. Plays like this, or what the Auburn Tigers are going to have to have against Alabama. And I know protection has been a little bit of an issue at times, but not many teams have been able to get Alabama into obvious passing downs. John yeah, Parker. third and nine, I think, was the first thing you said, which you want to get in Alabama into if you're the Auburn uh, defense. But I think it's affecting that pocket quick. So you know it's going to be a three- to five-step drop from the gun with that, that distance. So they were able to get back quick, and the quarterback doesn't even have to set, set his feet or take a hitch. Uh, so he has to get out of there, makes a bad decision uh, based on the pressure from up front. We'll see the Alabama defensive line and Ashad Robinson right here on this first place. First play, do the same thing that, that Auburn's defense was able to do, and that's affect the quarterback and make him uncomfortable in the pocket. We'll see Ashad Robinson right here lined up over left guard, really fire off the ball. And Cole, he's got a one-on-one -on -one battle. What do you see from him? And when you're an offensive line blocking a guy like this one-on-one, -on -one, what's, what's that like? The first thing I notice here from 86 is the wingspan. Able to extend the arms, keep the offensive lineman away from you. So really, he's now in control of the left guard. And you'll see him just kind of shed the left guard there. But key here too also is the center is dedicated and committed to helping with Jaron Reed on the right side. Normally as a center, if you go help with your right side, you want your eyes to stay left. So right here, he could have, he could have come back and maybe help the left guard a little bit once he's in trouble. But Dak Prescott, just not much of an opportunity to escape. Pressure up the middle is so valuable. 
whether you're a quarterback, uh, whether you're an offensive coordinator, it's so much more difficult to escape east and west when you're a quarterback, especially against a defense like Alabama. We see Denzel Duvall, Tim Williams later in this game have a lot of pressure to the outside. But this is just dominating a one-on-one. -on -one. It really is. And a quarterback, you're taught to hit your back step and then shuffle up, try to climb in the pocket so the, the defensive ends can push big guys like Carl, Carl Lawson by. But right here, when you're getting pressure up the middle, it's tough to have any kind of passing game all, at all. That's when you'll see the quarterback to start move the pocket. We'll see the next play. We're making a play up the middle again. Uh, Dak Prescott trying to, trying to throw the ball downfield but just doesn't have time. Well, and, and Jaron Reed, right here in the middle, you'll see Reed and Robinson again. They take up so much space inside, like John Parker was just talking about. There's no lane to step up into. You don't have to get a great push to ruin a pocket. But we mentioned hands with Ashawn Robinson. Jonathan Allen here on the left side. Watch how he'll use his hands and just toss the tackle to the side. Just sort of, sort of a push and rip through. Elite hands, elite defensive linemen is what Alabama's going to bring to the table. Auburn's offensive line will have their hands full. John Parker, one thing and a half to happen, Auburn needs to run the football. And I know not many teams have had success. One reason is not many teams can match the physicality of Alabama's front seven. Going to have to at least attempt to do that. Now, you think, watch Sean Coleman here get a little movement on the three technique. That's going to help him up to the second level. Not many teams have had success pushing Alabama's defensive linemen back off the football. Something that, if it can happen, can be very beneficial. And some of these counters and trap plays and power plays with pulling guards and pulling fullbacks and H-backs allow defenders to take themselves out of the play. I expect to see a lot of this early from the Auburn offense to see can they catch a couple defensive ends, linebackers out of spots to get a cut and maybe turn it into big yards. Yeah, and I love the, the misdirection that you're seeing from Auburn. It's so difficult as a linebacker to know where the ball is going when you have so many things happening in the backfield. You have to be really disciplined. Uh, it takes practice, and I think this is one of the things that Alabama's defense has shown in the past that they're vulnerable to, and that's the misdirection, this kind of spread type offense that we see from, from Auburn, Texas A&M, teams like that. Second play from Robinson, two pulling guards, and you'll see once these guys get rolling, really a nice job here from Kozan to redirect inside, Braden Smith to get a bit of a kick out. And if you're Alabama, Javon Robinson can break tackles. So you must shore up the tackling and make sure you get him down at first or second contact. You see two, two blocks from the guards that are pulling, Robinson able to run through a tackle, pick up some bonus yards, yards after contact. A very physical back and a couple physical guards, especially out in space. This is an area that Auburn will attempt to attack the Alabama defense. Cole, we always talk about you know, staying ahead of the sticks, running the ball with one safety, your two safeties right here. Mississippi State's got Alabama right where they want it. It's third nine. There's two deep safeties. You're expecting Alabama to throw the ball. However, we're going to split everybody out. O.J. Howard's even out. Uh, no, no, no tight end in, and we're going to give the ball to Derrick Henry and just let him do his thing. Uh, we'll see Ryan Kelly come out and make a real block of this. Mike's the one who really decides to play for the, for the Mississippi State team. When he jumps underneath the block, his job is to contain over top. And when, when there's two safeties back and Derrick Henry can get to the second level, he shows that he's, he's fast. He's one of the fastest guys on the team. He's out running cornerbacks right here. But I think it's the offensive line just not really caring what down the distance is. We know they're going to run the ball. That's their bread and butter. It's a great job you see right there on that second shot. Ryan Kelly's going to get up to the second level. I'm not sure if he understands who this guy's name is, but he's going to force the inside linebacker to play back underneath. Got to scrape over the top and at least force some traffic for Derrick Henry, make him make a cut a little bit earlier than he does. But you give Derrick Henry that hole with a full head of steam going north and south, it's lights out O'Reilly. He's going to take it to the house. That's it. And usually when, when we have – the extra safety in the box, what would you hear so much? This safety will be down here where he can kind of dictate the run early when he's back deep. He has a much harder job of getting in the run. And then once you can see Derrick Henry gets the second level, he's shown just like we saw the Auburn running back do last time. These running backs are very talented and it's hard for safeties to bring them down by themselves. <laughs>